Welcome to the Old Timer Centre. My name is Philip Tarrant and this particular car is a Mercedes-Benz E350 Coupe. And it's got the AMG pack. It's metallic, black in colour, with black leather interior and it's got a very good service history to it. It's done just 93,000 kilometres since it was brand new and it's got the AMG seats, <coughs> heated seats and I think is incredible value for money. It's got two remote keys and we'll start it up. It's got the 200 kilowatt V6 engine. Climate control. And pneumatic seats. Navigation. Bluetooth. Reverse camera. Panoramic sunroof. And Harman Kardon sound. We're still selling the old shape CLK with low kilometres for about thirty dollars to $35,000, which I think makes an update. <clears throat> New series, V6, incredible value for money. I think what you find is most of the E-Class coupes around the forty, thirty-five dollars to $40,000 mark are E250 petrols or diesels. And if you are considering a 250 or a 350, I would suggest driving both because the 250 isn't for everyone. Whether it's a petrol or a diesel, I find off the mark, they lack in power and then, then suddenly, as you start to get the revs up, it does develop power and I, I've personally found that you then get a bit of wheel spin and you can go through rear tyres quite a bit, whereas the V6 there's just a consistent power curve. And they were a lot more expensive when they were new. For me personally, I think the petrol's a little bit more consistent than the diesel. With the diesel, I find it's very underpowered, off the mark. And as I said, when the turbo kicks in, and you've got all that torque in the diesel, especially in the wet, you do get a bit of wheel spin, which is a shame because you really just want to put the power to the road and, and get going, especially if you're pulling out of a situation or a, a roundabout or something like that. So, as you may have gathered, my personal preference is the 350 V6. For everyday driving, the economy is very similar to a 250 petrol. It's smoother, quieter, and I think you're going to have better resale down the track. The other surprising thing is despite the fact that the 350 was so much more expensive when it was new, second hand, it's only a little bit more expensive than the 250. We have had another 350 coupe, and uh, there are a couple of people I've spoken to who have bought a 250, and they've actually um, traded their car in on the bigger on the 350 with the bigger engine. Don't get me wrong, the 250s are still very very good cars, but the 350 is just a better car in my opinion. And the 500 is a different story. The 500 with the 5.4 litre V8 has nearly 300 kilowatts, but they're also very rare. I found there was a lot more 250 petrols and diesels sold because they were a lot more affordable and they were more readily available. The other good thing about the 350 is it generally just came with more, more options. I remember driving a 250 um, AMG pack with everything, but it didn't have a reverse camera, I was quite surprised. And it's just those little things like the, the heated seats, I haven't seen 250s with heated seats. There's no options um, on this car that I'm aware of that aren't already on it. And so you've got the Harman Kardon sound, 
Bluetooth navigation, and pneumatic seats, AMG pack, AMG wheels. It's got tinted windows. The back seats fold down, which used to be an option in the older ones, and so that's probably standard now. Just pull that. Let's have a look in here. Yes, it's got a space saver type, which is great. It's got the Mercedes-Benz mat in the back there, the rubber mat, which you can take out, obviously. But it's a very impressive car and great value for money. The last 350 we had only lasted a couple of days. Thanks again for taking the time to watch our video. And if you don't have any further questions, please give us a call. You can ask for me. My name is Philip, and I'll be more than happy to assist you with your inquiries. Thanks again for watching.